I have not been out to my berry garden in a couple weeks. Part of that being because I was away for a week. So let's take a quick peek at the berry garden. The raspberries are greening up nicely. Um, but mostly we're coming to look at the rhubarb. So you can see how the rows look a lot tidier with having these. I need to tighten up some of the strings. Over here is the rhubarb. So this plant is all pretty tiny baby rhubarb. It's just the variety it is. But over here, what we're looking at, this rhubarb is thicker. And right here, you can see the tiniest bit of where someone tore off where I was trying to go to seed, but left a bit. So when you see these, but in a bigger clump, I actually want to take this off because that is the plant trying to go to seed. And this one is just a little yucky looking one. So you want to make sure it's not trying to get a seed on you because then it will stop producing. So that's something to just keep an eye on and to tear out. I need to weed in here, but it's just not happening right now. All I came was to pick some rhubarb. I don't have a whole lot ripe. I have some inside too in the fridge. So we're just going to pull a bit out. You know it's ready to pick when it's in, for me, it's a nice deep red, so this one was still a bit green. If you wait too long, they just get woody, so I pick these small ones because that's really just, they're not gonna get any thicker. They come out of the ground as thick as they're gonna be. So this is a really thin variety here. So these ones are all really tiny, thin ones. I'm not quite sure why. I almost want to phase out of having this variety because it's kind of annoying how tiny it is. I spaced it out thinking that might give me bigger ones, but not yet so far. While I'm out here, I'm also going to break off the leaves and then I just chuck them down on top of weeds to act like in the pathways. It's hard to do this one-handed act as additional weed barrier to help kill down the weeds. You can see ones that I did over there already. This year, if you saw the earlier video, you can see how there's lots of little rhubarb things because I divided out where it was crowded. Here, I put all the leaves down. It'll just help as additional barrier. Small harvest today. And, um, oh, hey, look at that. There's a baby bottle out here. Luckily, it just has water in it. It's been a while since we've been here. Let's go make something with rhubarb. This is our massive Hascat bush. And you can see little green Hascaps, they'll be purple in the ripe. Honestly, they don't do a lot for me. They're not very exciting berry, but this was here, so we leave it here. This rhubarb is not very dirty, so I'm not cleaning it, like washing it. All I'm doing is peeling off these bits if they're a little brown. If they're not, like if they still look decent, because this is all getting strained out, I'm just leaving it. And if there's a bit of dirt, I'm just rubbing it off. I'm really not being super picky here. But that's because I know the source really, really well. I've got four cups of chopped rhubarb, a cup of sugar, a cup of water, and I'm just gonna put it on medium low. I think I might grab a lid and cover this. We're just gonna let this sweat and simmer here well, I pop outside for a few minutes. Now that it is all soft and mashable, actually that piece still is a little firm. We're gonna simmer this a little longer until it's all mashable with my wooden spoon. I'm gonna go get some fresh mint now. By the time I get in, I'll take this off the heat, put the fresh mint in to steep for a bit, and then we will strain this out. The mint is optional. You could also use another herb. But I think it's gonna be fun. I kind of forgot about it for a bit while I was working on other things. And I wonder if it maybe <laughs> condensed down a bit too much and I should add some water. I'm gonna try straining it and see how it goes here.
swapped to using, it's actually a napkin, cloth napkin, because I couldn't squeeze out liquid well enough, but I didn't have it sealed well enough, and some just spluced out at me. Kind of shocked me that all of a sudden it shot out to the side. So we're gonna retwist it and keep going on gently squeezing it to get the most of this ruby goodness out of there. I ended up with this beautiful jar here. If you wanted to make a bigger batch, you can most definitely can this. I would look up to find um, proper canning instructions, but with the sugar fruit, there's nothing that's not cool to can there. Now, let's make ourselves a drink. My plan here was to show you how to make an amazing rhubarb cocktail. But then I discovered that I have no ice cubes. So we are going to proceed anyways, but I'm gonna show you how I make a cocktail when I want a cocktail, but I have no ice cubes. We're gonna use frozen fruit, okay? I think frozen peaches are my best bet here because they're big and they'll act as big ice cubes. And a peach rhubarb thing sounds like a good mix. I usually go for frozen strawberries as ice cubes and strawberry rhubarb would be pretty dandy too. Basically you're wanting big fruit, not little berries that are gonna thaw quick. Go for big frozen fruit. I've got two ounces gin, two ounces rhubarb syrup, and a big chunk of frozen peaches. I feel gin is a really good choice here because the floral botanical notes in gin really complement rhubarb. So, we're gonna get a shake to make sure this is all chilled because the syrup's actually still a little warm. And then we're gonna top it up with soda water. If you want a sweeter or more potent drink, feel free to add three or four ounces of rhubarb syrup. This is perfect for me, especially with those peaches thawing in there. And uh, cheers, friend. Mm.